I love video games so much. I'm pretty fond of this podcast, too. They're fun. This is fun. Video games are fun. Well, not all games. Echo the Dolphin's not really that fun, but most games are fun. You know what isn't fun? Buying razor blades. And my friends over at Harry's agree. And that's why they started their company. And I don't understand why anybody would buy razors from anyone else. I'm super serial. Hit up harrys.com slash RTG and pick up a $3 trial set to find out for yourself why I'm so damn serial about this. Harry's makes the best razor blades out there and they ship them right to your front door. I don't think I'm allowed to lie in these, but I'm not anyways. I've been using Harry's for years and I've never considered going anywhere else. The blades come in this awesome little container that's easy to travel with and keeps them sharp and clean and the razor handle doesn't look like a piece of plastic out of cyberpunk. Those handles are great for high school kids with peach fuzz but you're a man now. Shave like one. And it's not just the blades. Looking good is great but smelling good is just as important. Harry's has skin softening body wash with scents like stone, wildlands, and redwood. I don't want to smell like plastic. I want to smell like a man. They have awesome smelling deodorant for $5, hair products, grooming supplies, everything you need to go from a five to a nine. Well, like an eight, and we don't want to overpromise. Well, like an eight, at least. Harry's offers subscriptions so you can get your blades and supplies when you need them, and you can feel free to cancel at any time, but you won't want to, I promise. Listen to me. Harry's is legit. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just three bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And this week it is episode 291. And we're going back to back with the tough 16-bit games. Last week, we talked Super Star Wars for the SNES, which, by the way, I went out and bought a physical copy of after we recorded that episode. I played it a lot this past weekend. I got to the part where you get Han Solo. So I'm, I'm getting close. I'm going to beat that game and this week we're talking the lion king for the sega genesis and the super nintendo but i played the genesis version uh which i gotta be honest i wasn't as fond of as i was super star wars like look i know a ton of you grew up playing the lion king you probably love it i get it i'm like that with bart versus the space mutants i know it has its faults but it was my childhood and fuck haters you cannot break me i love that game i get why people feel that way about the lion king i did not grow up with the lion king and playing it now it's just it's just, it's mother fucking cheap. It's cheap. And it's, and I love tough retro games. I really do. Listen, Ninja Turtles, Contra, Super Star Wars, Battletoads. I love those tough old games. And The Lion King is gorgeous. I like the movie. I want to love the game. Now, the thing about it is like when I, I streamed it on Monday. When I finished the stream, I was so mad. I was like, I'm going to go on there and I'm going to rip The Lion King a new ass. Fuck that game and fuck cats in general and or lions or whatever the I guess the lion is a cat whatever the, I was so mad but then overnight I, I calmed down and I woke up this morning with this little this little tink in my, tinkle in my chest and it might be a heart condition but I think it's me being like I'm gonna beat this fucking game just to show just to show that game that it's possible because I know it's possible so maybe I do like it kind of because I, I just I don't know I don't know what it is about it I just it's not the difficulty, all right? The difficulty of that game doesn't ruin it for me because in three sessions, I can get about halfway through it. I can get to the waterfall where you're climbing the logs. I do think it's beatable. I think my problem with The Lion King is just that it doesn't... Like, it almost feels finished, but not quite. It's kind of cheap. Like, if you've never played it, it's a platformer that stays fairly true to the, the source material. The problem with it, in my opinion, is just the insanely precise platforming. It's inconsistent and the frustrating controls. It's just you're trying to grab a ledge, and if you're off by one pixel, fuck you, try again. But then a very similar-looking rock or whatever the fuck has a whole different box on where you grab it. That stampede level, I can't even figure out what the fuck is hitting me and what isn't. And like, and that's what drives me crazy. I'm sure a lot of you uh, that did play it know level two with the monkeys and those hippo tails all too well. Like, I, I, I want to love this game. I really do. I guess I, I, 
I don't even know if I like it. I feel like it's the girl that's really mean to me, but I can't stop talking to her. I feel like that's what the Lion King is going to be for me. I don't, it's, I don't know. It's inconsistent, it's frustrating, and it's cheap. But nostalgia is that seasoning that makes everything taste better. And there's just a small part of me that can't walk away from a challenge when it comes to a retro game. So uh, my buddy Andre is my guest this week. He was my victim way back on the Echo the Dolphin episode. Will this be another Echo? I don't think I'm going to go that far. But uh, I am pretty confident I'm going to piss some people off this week. And we'll get there in just a minute because speaking of pissing people off, it's time for another edition of the Remember the Game Infamous intro. If you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard and consider this your warning. Our intros are long, but they're fun, and uh, skipping them is exponentially easier than beating that fucking stampede level. So if you do want to skip it, go to about the 30-minute mark. I recommend hanging around. We're talking video games and stuff. It's good times. Uh, quick, quick plugs. You can find it all at RememberTheGamePodcast.com. We have all kinds of merch. Hoodies, t-shirts, coffee mugs, posters, all designed by my man Joe from 4545 Creative. He's a fucking beast. Uh, and of course, if you don't want to do clothes, I get it. Check us out on, on Patreon. That's about the best way you could possibly support us. Our subscription started just $3 a month. You can listen to our episodes on any podcast service, including Spotify now. Thank God. And we offer four additional ad-free podcasts each week. Monday, Purple Monkey Dishwasher, where Mark McHugh and I are talking episodes of The Simpsons. Tuesday, The Rambling Idiot, where I ramble like an idiot about whatever I want. This week, I got into Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire, and stuff like that. Friday, it's Game Patch. It's my modern gaming news show where I talk about the biggest stories in video games and all that good stuff. And Thursday is Expansion Pass, which is a different gaming show each week. There's a little bit of everything in there. It's good times. This past week, it was Expansion Pass 204. And with all the gaming TV shows coming out these days, I thought it'd be fun to talk about the game franchises that would actually make for a really good TV series. And as is becoming tradition, here is a sneak peek of last week's episode of Expansion Pass, game franchises that need a TV show. Uh, the next one on my list is another one that I also think opens the door to just infinite stories. You've got this massive world and all these characters and there's so much you could talk about. And a couple of you wrote in about this as well. Uh, Mass Effect. Dude, come on. Like, frankly, I think a Mass Effect movie would work as well. But I've never watched Star Trek. But I know that like there's so many... Once you're in outer space, guys, like the world is your oyster. You could do anything out there. And with Mass Effect, you could travel from planet to planet to planet, interact with different races, classic characters, new characters. There's the, the Reapers are coming. The, 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 there's so much you could do in the world of Mass Effect. Those games, I don't love giant, big, open-world RPGs. I, I like playing them, but I never finish them because they're so long. I've played through the entire Mass Effect trilogy. I replayed Mass Effect 2 a couple years ago. Still one of the greatest video games I've ever played in, in my life. We are going to be covering Mass Effect 3 later on this year. I need to do a replay of that at some point when I fucking have like 90 hours to spare. Uh, I, I adore that universe. That's now available in our archives, and this week for Expansion Pass 205, the topic was up to our Patreons, and a really fun, kind of unique idea ran away with the poll. Back in Nintendo Power number 100, they published a list of the top 100 video games of all time. This was published in 1997, and I'm going to count it down and react to it on the show. It's very Nintendo biased because it's Nintendo Power. Uh, it should be fun. I, I think this is going to be a good time. We haven't done anything like this before. So, again, subscription started $3 a month. You get ad-free podcasts every week. Plus... Maybe the best benefit is instant access to literally hundreds of ad-free archive bonus podcasts. There's got to be 600 podcasts over there right now. Plus, access to the Remember the Game Discord, which is like a thousand some members. Uh, the chance to vote on our Patreon poll every month. Our Genesis poll is running right now. You get the ability to submit comments to our shows. You get DM with me, and you even get a shout-out and get to hear me mispronounce your name like I'm about to do to these people. A huge thank you to our newest patrons, Nick W., Jonathan Downing, Crystal Lake Management, Red Hot Ginger, Thomas D. McLeod and Cliff Whitlock. Thank you so much for the support. I, don't, I might not have fucked any of those up. That would be a first. Thank you all so much for the support. Welcome to Remember the Game Industries. You can find all that at patreon.com slash remember the game. Don't forget, uh, we offer annual subscriptions that'll save you your 12th month's fees and we donate 5% of our Patreon income to the Stollery Children's Hospital every fall as part of my 24-hour charity stream. You're pretty well doing a good deed for the world and getting a bunch of podcasts and keeping my bills on and it's, it's good shit. Uh, and then you can find me over on Twitch. 
whenever you want. Twitch.tv slash member the game. There's always videos over there. I'm always going online, playing old games like I have the Lion King and getting fucking mad at that fucking waterfall. God damn it. Anyway, that's enough blowing myself. Let's blow some of you by blowing in some cartridges. It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our Patreons, usually gaming related, but not always. And we call this segment blowing in the cartridge. He blows all right. He blows big time. That's it, honey. Get into the spirit. Let's blow our first blower this week is Super Garbage Day, who wrote in and said, Adam, the villains from the last two games you played are coming for you, but you can choose one hero from the last TV show you watched. How do you fare? So the last two games I played were The Lion King, so that's... Who's the bad guy from The Lion King? Ah, what's his name? Ah, I'm, dude, I hate to say this because it always sounds like a pun and I'm not, but I'm drawing a blank. What's the name? I guarantee you some of you are yelling it at the... I, I haven't seen this movie in like 30 years. Some of you are yelling it at your, your, I guess your car, your headphones, whatever the, whatever the fuck you're listening to this to on right now. The Lion King villain. He's that big evil looking cat. Ah, fuck. What's his name? Scar. That's it. All right. So Scar. So, uh, so the two villains that would be out to kill me are Scar and Sephiroth. Uh, oh fuck. Cause I'm playing Final Fantasy seven rebirth. And then I get one hero from the last TV show I watched, which was Monday night raw. So I get what? Cody Rhodes. So it's me and Cody Rhodes against Scar and Sephiroth. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. It's Cody can't beat Roman Reigns. How the fuck is he going to beat Sephiroth? I, I'm i fucked. Oh, well. It's a good run. Uh, Chet Walters. I got to watch more TV, apparently. Chet Walters says, Hi, Adam. As a 90s kid, what do you think of the RoboCop franchise? Super stoked to start RoboCop Rogue City and wanted to get your thoughts. Thanks. Uh, I get asked this quite a bit, especially since that new game came out. Um, I know everyone's going to yell at me for this. I've never seen anything from RoboCop. I, I will. I promise. People keep telling me I need to watch it. I hear you. But I have, as of this moment, have never seen anything from RoboCop. So uh, my thoughts are indifferent, but I hear that Rogue City is actually pretty good. So I hope you like it. Cheese Zombie Gaming said, Hey, Adam, I've been stuck in the hospital for 49 days now because I had to get a liver transplant. I just wanted you to know that your podcasts have really helped me through these dreary days. I also want to know if you're going to be playing the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game called Wrath of the Mutants. It's a port of a newer arcade game. Anyways, just thought I would let you know that you do a lot to help, that you do help a lot of people in hard times. Thanks so much. Aw, jeez. Gonna stop balling here. Uh, Zombie, thank you so much, pal. And obviously, thoughts and prayers. I mean, I don't... I don't really pray. Thoughts? I hope you feel better. Uh, that sucks, buddy. I uh, Hang in there. And uh, yeah, I probably will. I'm not convinced it's going to be that. I'm positive that I've played. If you don't know, it's an upcoming home port. I think it's the home port of an arcade game based on the 2012 series. And I'm pretty sure I've played it in arcades before. And it was kind of, yeah. But uh, I'll probably. It's Ninja Turtles. I can't help myself. I'm part of the problem. I'm Adam part of the problem blank. I'm probably going to buy it. Yeah. Uh, Adam blank licks Duke Nukem's taint. Ugh. Says, Dear Adam, what wrestling death hit you in the balls the hardest? I know with his past lifestyle, Scott Hall had probably lived longer than most would have thought, but after turning it all around and dying during hip surgery, that one really took the wind out of my sails. Rest in peace, Chico. Dude, so many wrestling deaths have sucked. I I would probably say Eddie Guerrero was the, the roughest one on me. Owen Hart was pretty brutal because I live here in Alberta and obviously the hearts are royalty here. Um... But I was, I don't, yeah. But I think I was just kind of young when Owen died. I was in grade 10. Whereas, you know, I was out of high school when Eddie died. It'd be one of those two. Owen and Eddie both sucked. I, man, Scott Hall sucks. Fuck. Really is sad that so many people that have contributed to this business I love so much have have passed away. Wrestling is a motherfucker. Uh, Adam's Lazy Fry. (laughs) Adam's Lazy Fry says, Time to blow the winger ki- the Wiener King's cartridge. I went back and listened to episode one covering Super Mario World, and I have an observation and a question. You dunked on the Sega Saturn right at the five-minute mark, and knowing what we know now, it genuinely made me laugh out loud. Have you ever given your buddy Chris any shit for how he pronounces Mario, or do you just let it slide? Thanks for the awesome show. Did I really dunk on... Uh, for anyone that asks why I always dunk on the Saturn, it's just kind of become a running joke here. Like, I have no ill will towards the Saturn at all. Just become a running bit here the in the community. I don't remember dunking on it on episode one, but that is funny if I did that. Um, and then as far as giving my buddy Chris shit for how he says Mario, I don't, but that's only because I feel like it would be hypocritical as as all fuck for me to give somebody shit for the way they say a name. So I, I don't. Um, 
I assume he says Mario. I don't know. I'm I'm okay. I prefer Mario, but I'm okay with Mario. Eh. Now, if he's saying like Mario or something, then then he's going to get these hands. But uh, he's a Sega Saturn and he's a Saturnian. What the fuck do you expect? Uh, Josh Valentani says, uh, hey, have you ever played Classic Concentration from the NES? Or do you just use the wonderful sounds from the game? Oh, no, I have. I actually, do I still own it? I do. I still have my childhood copy of it for the NES sitting right here on my shelf. Uh, good game, but the computer cheats to all fuck. It's bullshit, but I have played it. Hot Cheese Sauce says, Wiener Lord, I have a question. You mentioned menu. You've mentioned menu time. Oh, many times. Did it autocorrect to many or did you mean to say menu? I think many. You mentioned many times throughout the podcast that you have shitty eyes. As a fellow hot dog with shitty eyes, I'd like to know what games you love but find hard to play with your eyes. And do your friends take advantage of them during multiplayer games? A struggle for me is I love Undertale, but since I'm colorblind to, to blue, red, and green, it can be a bitch of a game to play. The red heart on black background is terrible and the eat your green monster sucks because all the pellets look the same to me. People also choose the ice levels on Mario Kart when I play with them, knowing it'll fuck me up. All for good times, though, I would do the same. Oh, yeah, of course you would. Uh, I, I wouldn't say my friends take advantage of my shitty eyes. If anything, I'd argue I have a slight advantage because I can screen watch because my lazy eyes look into the right. But no, my friends don't do anything to me. As far as games I've had a hard time playing because of my eyes, I have no depth perception. I can't see 3D at all. So uh, I have minimal depth perception, but I can't see 3D at all. So anytime I play the 3DS, I can't, I can't, I have to turn the 3D off. I can't see it. When I turn it on, it's just fuzzy. I can't see 3D. So that's really the only time my eyes have impacted uh, the way I play a game. Uh, and then finally, before we move on, it's letter time. It's letter. Oh, and I was a goalie for quite a while in hockey. And all my friends knew that I was blind on my right side. So the wraparound on the right side of the net was uh, a layup. So fuckers. Uh, it's letter time. It's letter time. Dropkick Mac says, good morning, Adam. If the next Switch added an upgraded version of Smash Ultimate with a Remember the Game Pack, which five characters would you add? Let's assume Waluigi and Dixie are added specifically. Keep up the great work. So I, I okay, so I interpret this as you're like, what five characters would I add to Smash Brothers? And we're assuming Waluigi and Dixie were already added. Now, do you mean five Remember the Game people or just five video game characters? Because I don't want to name five Remember the Game people because I feel like I would piss everybody off. Because I can't possibly sit all my friends in there with five. But it would be me, Molly, Shay. I mean, Mark McHugh has to be there. I don't want to name Because I don't want any of my friends. Because then there's still, there's like, there's Chris, there's Daniel, there's Tyler, there's Andre, there's Kate. I don't want to leave anybody out. So I'm not, I'll just, okay, for Remember the Game, it'll be me, Shaylee, Molly, um, Molly's toy unicorn, Francis, which is our chief financial officer. And... Uh, let's say Mo. Uh, shout out to him that gets that reference. As far as five video game characters, I would add to Smash, assuming Waluigi and Dixie have already been added. Crash Bandicoot for sure. 100 billion percent. He needs to be there. Um. Dr. Wily is two. Master Chief. I'm, I'm assuming they can get the rights. Master Chief is three. That'd be sick. Spyro the Dragon for four. And uh, Crash, Wily, Master Chief, Spyro, and uh, fuck, I have like a dozen ideas in mind. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm choking. Proto Man. Fuck it. Proto. Uh, well. Oh, no. You know what? Fuck it. We're getting anybody we want here, right? This is for fun. I will add a Big Daddy from Bioshock. That'll be my fifth one. That would be fucking sick. There you go. That's my five additions to Smash Brothers. We got to keep this ball moving. Thank you, everybody, for all the submissions. As always, I appreciate it. Now, before we get to the official game show, remember the game industries. Let's see what's up with our partners over at Arcade. If you haven't been paying attention, Arcade is this sweet new browser, Arcade. Or Arc Arcade. Arcade. Sorry, Arcade. I suck it. Let me start this again. I'm bad at this. Let's see what's up with the friends over at Ourcade. If you haven't been paying attention, Ourcade is this sweet new browser, Arcade. Fuck, easy for me to say. Where you can compete in classic games and win cash prizes. It's like getting a new console on Christmas morning. Their games are easy to play, they're tough to master, they're fun, and everyone's battling for the highest score. It's like old school meets 2024. I love it. So what's new with them this week? First of all, they've added a new Prima League. 
for the best of the best of the best. That way the heavyweights can battle it out for big prizes while the rest of us can still stay competitive. As someone that has been humbled by this community at these games, I really like that. Uh, they've also cleaned up Yield Pong. It's looking better than ever. I love that game. Their new game, Claim Invaders, will be up for training and practice this week. Contests for it are coming soon. So go to OurK.io now, try out Claim Invaders, and let them know what you think of it. And they hear you. You want more games. Glugger is a spin on Classic Tapper, and that's the next one on the docket. And after that will be Ocean Odyssey, which is inspired by Lunar Landing. Our arcade is going big. New games, new game modes. So much is coming. Tell your friends, tell your enemies, and then beat them at these games and win cash for doing it. And before I get to the leaderboards and your cheat code for this week, um, our arcade wanted me to let all the hot dogs know, thank you so much for the overwhelming support. They're going to take a short break from Remember the Game to work on those new games and stuff, but they said to let everyone know how awesome this community has been, and again, just to say thank you. So that's rad. Okay. The Remember the Game leaderboards. We have been working with our arcade for one month, and they want to shout out the three three of the standout hot dogs. Number one, Floppy Llama, the undisputed Remember the Game champion of Cade Runner and the number two rated player on the planet. Quit your job and go pro, Llama. Go pro. Number two, Mixer Tuna for teaching all of us the meaning of past the onion. He has been number one at Ye Old Pong for a long time now. Officially the GOAT. And on a side note, I have tried so hard to catch you, Tuna, for real. I cannot beat you at that game. It drives me crazy. And number three, Cephoid. Our arcade is awarding you the most balanced player award for being the best player in the community across both games overall. So your Remember the Game Hall of Fame paperwork is in the system for the three of you. Unfortunately, it is stuck behind Mark McHugh, so I don't know when you're actually going to get in. Now, I have one more cheat code for all you listeners. It is a six-letter word. This will get you some credits on the site, all right? This is your cheat code for the week. Six-letter word. It's related to one of the all-time multiplayer greats, GoldenEye007. And it is the name of a short little man with a stupid hat that is the biggest cheat of all time. He is an odd job. If you can solve that, enter your cheat code at ourcade.io under the reset option, scoop up some free credits, and take a run at some cash prizes. And... If you have entered all four codes from this past month, including the one I just gave away, Arcade is thanking you with 10 daily credits for the entire remainder of their alpha phase, which is huge with the new games coming. The three previous codes are active still, so if you miss them, check out the last three episodes of Remember the Game. To get your codes, go to Arcade.io, enter them. Free credits for the duration of the alpha, okay? Uh, and again, Arcade is grateful for the support, and they're just asking one thing, all right? If you like what they're doing, Tell people, spread the word, tell your friends, your families, your enemies, post it on social media. They have been great partners for Remember the Game. I think what they're doing is awesome. It has been great to see this community embrace them like we have. All right? It's sick. Thank you, Arcade. Go to Arcade.io today and compete totally free for cash prizes and use this week's cheat code to get even more credits and access to the Remember the Game leaderboards. That's Arcade.io. O-U-R-K-A-D-E dot I-O. And you'll find it in the description of this podcast as well. All right, let's switch it up and get to our Smash It segment, the official game show of Remember the Game Industries. It is Play One, Remake One, Erase One. And as always, a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. Every week I give our patrons three retro video games. They can play one as it was released, remake one as a modern game, and the third is a race from time forever. As always, there are no wrong answers. There is a right one, though. I'll tell you what it is in a second. This week, since we're talking The Lion King, I went with three more Disney Genesis games. We've got Aladdin, Quackshot, and Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. This was very close. 1% difference between the winner and the runner-up. But play Aladdin, remake Castle of Illusion, and erase Quackshot 1. So let's see what a few of you had to say here, and then I'll tell you what the right answer was. Alpha Kenny 1 said, Play Quackshot because it is hands down the best Genesis game ever made. Uh, remake Aladdin because it, while it was fun, it could use an upgrade. And then erase Castle of Illusion because I feel like it was the start to that Kingdom Hearts bullshit that nobody asked for and needed. Do not yell at me. That was Alpha Kenny 1. Don't, don't yell at me. I don't agree. I don't disagree, but don't yell at me. I am the mutt said play Quackshot. I've never even heard of it, but it has Donald who is the best Disney character. Agreed. Remake Castle of Illusion because on new hardware, it could be amazing and take Mickey out and put Donald in and then erase Aladdin because if I can't play as the genie with Robin Williams voice, what is the point? 
It's fucking sound logic all the way around. Rage George, Ray George, said, Play Aladdin. It's a great game. It doesn't need any changes. Castle of Illusion was also great, but a remake with updated graphics and gameplay refreshing would take an already cool concept over the top. Quackshot? What is that? By Felicia. Quackshot is a quacking gun i don't i don't know what it is either coach huzz said play quack shot because i've never heard of it remake aladdin because it's the second best animated disney movie and a race mansion mickey doesn't oh and a race mansion mickey doesn't need any more shine i agree with that fucking go away mickey what's the best animated disney movie if aladdin's number two is it the lion king what about my lion king might be my favorite animated disney movie actually now that i think about it uh, I really like The Little Mermaid too, but, and then Tony Pidwan says, play Castle of Illusion. It's a classic remake quack shot. Let's face it. Someone's going to do it anyways to put pants on old mate instead of letting him free ball everywhere and tidy up his sass mouth and then erase Aladdin. Then use the genie to bring it back because rules are for fools. I'll show myself to the double secret probation section. You know what? I'm not even going to, you are cheating by erasing a game and then bringing it back, but you know what? I'm going to let it slide. And not put you on double secret probation. Because erasing a video game but then using the genie from Aladdin to bring the game back is the cleverest loophole to these rules I've ever seen. So no double secret probation for you, Tony. Single secret probation. But that's well done, Tony. Uh, I personally am going with the runner-up. 24% uh, of the vote. Uh, was it 24 yeah, 24% of the vote this week was uh, with the order that I went with, as did Master Boyg, who said, play Aladdin on the Genesis because the Blast Process version got it right. Remake Quackshot because Donald rocks, and while I love him as my right-hand mage in Kingdom Hearts, I'd love a new game with him as the star. And then Erase Castle of Illusion because I can always get my retro castle fix from the Castlevania games, which are better than Mickey Mouse's game, by the way. Uh, same reasoning, or same order, different reasoning. I'm going to play Aladdin for the Genesis so I can see for myself if it's better than the Super Nintendo version Version, like everyone keeps telling me it is i'm gonna remake quack shot and all i'm gonna really do is add it to modern consoles so i can play it easier and i'm gonna erase mickey mouse's castle of illusion because i've beaten it i don't like mickey and i don't ever feel the need to play it again pretty simple thank you everyone that played along as always uh what have i been playing over the last seven days pretty much the same as last week balacho i still can't beat that fucking game i have lost on the final boss of that game so many times it infuriates me Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Uh, good. Still not out of... I think there's maybe a little too much side questing for my tastes, but it's been good. Uh, Super Star Wars. I just explained. I can't stop playing that game. The Lion King, which is making my hair grayer than it already was. And I'm still playing WWE 2K24, and it's fucking awesome. And I love it. That is it, okay? So let's pause here. We'll let a sponsor come in and peddle their wares, and then I'll be back, and it's all Lion King, okay? We'll be right back after this. Look, I may hate computers, but there's no denying how much of our lives are on them these days. I can't even begin to tell you how devastated I'd be if something happened to all this stuff on my Mac. Six years of podcasts, all my videos, comedy contracts, tax information. This computer is my lifeline. If you're in the same position, you'd be a fool not to check out CrashPlan. They offer unlimited backups of the files on your computer. And if you check out CrashPlan.com slash RTG, you'll get 50% off your first year of their services. CrashPlan takes takes data preservation seriously. They know just how much of our lives are tied to our computers, and they're offering the best backup on the net. Their work in the world is to protect your work in the world, and they're damned good at it. CrashPlan works in the background of your computer. It's the unsung hero of your mainframe, or whatever the hub of a computer is called. Every 15 minutes, they're backing up all the new or changed files on your computer. So if something goes wrong, you're not losing a day's work. And I know every single one of you listening to this has lost your work at some point going back 15 minutes instead of hours or days is a massive difference and fortunately these nerds know that some of you are like me and computers scare the hell out of you they make it super easy to use their services and access your backups so you don't have to spend 20 minutes googling how to get your work back and it doesn't matter if you're a one-man show like remember the game is or you're a real company with employees and stuff crash plan has a plan for companies of all shapes and sizes you've been working on your stuff for weeks months years it takes a few minutes to check them out and find the plan that suits you seems like a no-brainer to me don't let data disasters slow you down crash plan has your back and keeps you moving go to crashplan.com rtg for 50 percent off your first year of crash plan that's crashplan.com rtg for 50 percent off your first year back up better with crash plan 
All right, let's get into the Lion King. As always, I like to let uh, you nerds sound off on the game we're covering before my guest and I hog the microphone. We had a lot of comments on this one, mostly talking about how hard it is. So let's get into it. Smith wrote in and said, This game taught me a valuable lesson as a child, that Disney thinks of me as nothing more than a mindless consumer who will spend money on anything with bright colors and catchy music. Game controls be damned. I hate this game. See, I do agree. Like, I think this game is beautiful and fun to listen to, but it's controls. It's controls are the biggest problem. I agree with that 100%. Matlock, that's a great name. Matt Lock, that's great. Said, I remember renting this game as a five-year-old and giving up after about 10 minutes because of that goddamn giraffe level. 20 plus years later, I got really into retro gaming and revisited this game and thought to myself, there's no way it was really this hard. And holy shit, I was wrong. Agreed. Scrap 104 said, I got this game with my Genesis for Christmas. Graphics and music were good for its time. That's the only positive thing I can say. This game was so unforgiving. As a kid, I was only able to reach the first or second stage with Adult Simba, and at that point, I didn't have many lives and no continues left. I beat the game using the level select code, and even then it took a while to figure out how to defeat Scar, and the ending sucked as well. I Really? Does the ending suck? I've heard the Scar fight is weird. You have to like throw him off a cliff or something. But I've never seen the ending. I wonder if Simba becomes the king. Nick W. said, I had this for the Sega Game Gear and I couldn't make it past level three. What's level three? Is that... Is that the Boneyard? I think it is. Well, it doesn't matter. It's all fucking impossible. Uh, and you know what? Before people write in, and they're like, oh, it's not that hard because I always get those comments. No, it's not like it's not Dark Souls or anything, but like it's a, huff, it's a hard game. It just... If you don't think that this is a tough game, then I don't know if you know what the term tough game is. Are there harder games? Yes. But every time we talk about a tough game, people write in, they're like, it's not as hard as insert game here. And I'm like, I'm not saying it is. We're just saying it's a hard game. It is hard. Things can be hard. Hard. And, and Storm Beagle said, this game sucks. Not to be such a negative Nelly, but I think this gets placed in the pantheon of hard platformers. And while it is hard, I don't think it's by design. The game just plain sucks. That being said, the graphics are incredible. They just forgot to make it playable for their target demographic or anyone for that matter. And we're going to get into all of that right now. The music is spectacular until you listen to it over and over on a loop while you keep dying and then it starts to grate on your fucking nerves. But for now, I'm going to cue up some of the Lion King music that is very, very good. And when it stops, it's time for my buddy Andre and I to talk about the Lion King. Oh no, I forgot to look up the release date. Ah, shit. Hang on. Wait, just, you know what? I'll let this music keep playing and maybe it'll annoy you as much as it annoyed me when I kept dying at this fucking game. Lion King, Genesis... How did I forget to do this? God, I suck at my job. Come on, Wikipedia, 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 Wikipedia. <laughs> November 9th, 1994 on the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Let's go. All right, this is uh, this should be fun. Joining me via the blank phone this week to talk the Lion King is uh, is the guy who became infamous on on episode eighty five where we talked Echo the Dolphin, and he's back for another Sega Genesis rage inducing game, and that is my friend Andre. How's it going, buddy? Oh, I'm doing just wonderful, sir. Here to talk some Lion King. The was it, I think this was one of the last games I drafted too. I think it was, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you won that draft, if I'm not mistaken. I did. Lion King helped me win the draft. And uh, it's, fuck. It's, That's because it's, people it's, haven't fucking played it in 25 years, and they don't know what it was. I, I will know. say, second week in a row, last week I was playing Super Star Wars while we were recording. I am playing, you can hear the, I am playing the Lion King as you and I are talking right now. I'm in the portion where I need to solve the monkey puzzle, and despite solving this three times in the last three days, I still don't remember what to do. So the whole recording i oh. might be trying to fucking solve this monkey puzzle um okay so i hate, the, I, I hate those monkeys so much me too Ugh. i so i was i was streaming this on monday which is yesterday when we're recording this and i was ready to just rip this game the ass of all asses like i was gonna like do it echo the dolphin style because i was so <laughs> mad i was so mad when i finished my stream because this game could be so frustrating but and maybe this just says something about me i have to say man like I woke up this morning still mad at the game, but also kind of like, I'll fucking show you. And, and like, and that's normally how I feel with these tough games is I'm like, I want to go back and take another shot at them because I love these tough old retro games. I, I, I don't think I like this game, 
but I, 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 I think I described it in the intro as like, it's the girl I like, but she's really mean to me. And like, she hurts me all the time, but I can't stop talking to her. I feel like that's where I am with the Lion King. Yeah. Again, like, sense. I look at like this game until I replayed it here for, for this. I, I was like, this, I love this game. It was so much fun. It was the best. And then I played it and I'm like, why did I like this so much? Is it yeah. just because of the goddamn movie? It's got to be because of the goddamn movie. But oh. I, I, this movie, just, this game just infuriates me. But like, again, we were children. We didn't get, I, it's a game you got, you got, you either rented or you got for your birthday. And, you just played it over and over and over again. This is one of the ones I rented and you yeah. played over and over and over again. Cause you, and that frustration doesn't hit you that it didn't hit me then, you know, you get frustrated, no. but it didn't hit the same way as now. Well, and, and so that's come up a lot from people in the comments on my social media and stuff is like, uh, they made this game hard on purpose because they had to extend, like, otherwise people would rent it, beat it in a weekend and then never want it again. And I was reading that they actually didn't have time. Holy fuck, I beat the monkeys. Um, they didn't. Oh, wow. That sounds funny to say, but I beat the monkeys. Uh, they, um, they didn't have time to like add levels to the game. So what they did was just kind of, you know, make the difficulty of it harder. And, and you're right. And so many other kids or so many people have said that to me over the last week or so since I, I brought up that we we're going to be reviewing this. This was one that so many people rented. Because, dude, I, for any of our younger listeners that maybe weren't around in the 90s when The Lion King came out, like, this movie was fucking everywhere, mm -hmm. everywhere. And it was a, and like to its credit, I, I said in the intro, I think don't quote me. I think it might be my favorite animated Disney movie. Like I love the Lion King. It's a good flick. Ooh, it, it's up there. There's a couple yeah, you, like, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. Do you have a favorite animated? Oh, uh, probably Aladdin. I just, I watched so much yeah. Aladdin when I was a kid and I got into the TV show. I, we, I, Actually, the third Aladdin movie, the, the the Forty Thieves one, I actually really like that one. Most people, hate, it's one of the least favorite ones, but I love that movie. I but think I've only seen the first one with, yeah. with Robin Williams. That and Aladdin, the first movie. Aladdin movie is so so well done. Yeah, it is good. As yeah. is Lion King. As is Lion. Oh, also Goofy movie. Like that'd be my top oh, three. Okay, no Goofy movie, definitely yeah. Goofy movie. Like I, goofy I, movie. I still listen to that soundtrack regularly because it's just got the the songs from that that movies are so good me too i have them on my phone like stand yeah. out and eye to eye i have them on my phone uh and for the record because i know people have asked like i know there's not a goofy movie game but we will i we will do goof troop on this on this show eventually i promise nice. um but yeah so like lion king was everywhere back in the day so you knew it was going to get a video game and i and i will say that like compared to some of the listen anyone that grew up in the nes snes genesis era like how many bad movie TV show games did we get back? Like there were so many. Yeah. And lot, I don't think this one is Oh, buddy. Like Ghostbusters on the NES mm. hurts my heart to this day. Like, cause it's, it's just didn't have any, it had no reason to be that bad. I don't think this game is anywhere near like this game. Isn't it's not bad. It's not like it's a cheaply made half-assed cash in on the IP, like back to the future Ghostbusters. Some of those, like, it's not that it's just for a game that was clearly, clearly marketed toward children uh it is it is fucking malicious and yeah and i and some of the game design fuck i keep dying in this stupid boneyard now some of the game design mm. is what makes it hard because and we talked about it we'll get more into it like the small hitboxes and stuff but also like even even without the small hitboxes and things it's just that stampede dude that stampede level oh like i, I fuck me like i'm just like jumping around hopefully trying to get through it yeah like, that's what it is for me it's like praying and praying i don't die that's yeah, yeah what it is for me i and and that's like and again i so we have covered it i know that like they made it hard to to extend the the rental period so kids wouldn't beat it in a day i i understand i get okay all that. so so i do echo the dolphin which is the same thing and now i'm doing lion king which is the same thing okay interesting <laughs> yeah well but like i don't know I, I i will say like i think this is a better game than echo the dolphin because oh, echo yeah, the but dolphin, again, both games were meant to be hard where were increased the difficulty was increased though, sure but both, the, dif the, the difference is like i i play echo the dolphin and i'm like as a grown man i still only half know what i'm supposed to do yeah true. at least in the lion Very king I, I get what i have to do i just can't make the little fucking cat do it but i understand oh. what he needs to do like the um, swinging the, the climbing and the swinging aggravate me so much because as you you jump 
if you're on a ledge, it makes it usually like, unless you're the swinging's annoying trying to get next to the next one. But when you're climbing up the walls and it, it pushes you out when you jump and to go to go to the other side. But there's some that are all up the same size. So you're having to like jump and you go and you have to push yourself back at the same time. And it's just like, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I find the 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 jumping like so when I was streaming it uh, yesterday. I, I said it was inconsistent and somebody, I think it was Ron, somebody came by and was like, uh, it's not inconsistent. It's very consistent. And I, maybe, I, I still feel inconsistent is the correct word. It's not inconsistent in the sense of like, sometimes he'll catch the ledge if I touch it in the right spot and sometimes he won't. I do think it's inconsistent in the sense of like, one ledge makes me feel like, oh, so this is where I need to land to mm -hmm. catch this ledge. And then the the next ledge, it's like, not the same ledge, but like one that looks similar. It's like, oh no, you actually need to grab it three pixels further to the right. And then it's like, in the next level, it's like, oh, you need to be two more pixels to the left. And I, I, I don't know anything about making games, but I know that I know what hitboxes are. And dude, mm -hmm. the fucking, the, 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 the precision within which you need to hit some of these jumps to grab ledges and not die is absolutely ridiculous. And, and it, and it, it, it is literally like, Sometimes it feels like there is one pixel that you need to let that Simba's paw touch. And if you don't touch that one pixel, you're going right right through that fucking ledge. And, yeah, and I think that infuriates me about it more than anything. Well, yeah, in that boneyard level you said you're playing now, there's the right one now. where you have to jump up and then they have that like green liquid chasing after you. Yeah. And you're like and, and like if you don't aren't hitting your buttons at the perfect timing, you're you you are going to get you're going to get hit and it killed me so many times because you're getting just you're just slightly off with your jump timing. Yeah, I was trying you're to explain it like imagine if when you're playing Mario, they were like, well, some question blocks you need to hit dead center, some you need to hit on the left edge, some you need to hit on the right. Like that's that's how I feel is I never know going into a, a, a ledge like and i admittedly like after playing it for a few days like i am getting better at it but mm. i i never know like where do i need to land to not die on this ledge or like i just died fighting hyenas because literally I, i'm like i'm trying to jump on him but I, I guess i'm not jumping in the right spot when he's huffing and puffing like i i feel like that's where the difficulty of this game comes from is the is the fucking mm. it's insanely precise while also being incredibly sloppy yeah, and again, and, like it does, the oh, the amount of times the hyenas kill me in this game. Oh, oh yeah, it's it's dark. it's ridiculous. It's Ooh. fucking ridiculous. I, I and like and people have written in and be like, dude, I beat that game as a kid. It's not that hard. It fucking like, listen, is it Dark Souls? No. Like, is it? I've beaten harder games than this. I've been playing this mm -hmm. for three days, and I can get to stage six of ten. I'm I'm willing to bet a lot of money. If I wanted to, I could beat this game before the end of this week if I wanted to put the time into it. It's not that. It's that as a kid, I would have rented this and probably would have played the shit out of it just like I did Ninja Turtles on the NES even though it was ridiculously difficult because I was like, well, this is my game that I rented and I like the source material. But like playing it now in, in, in 2024, I'm just like, this was... I, I, I don't feel this is a very well-made game. I think it's a beautiful game and we'll get into that in the positives after the break. I, I, it has some positives. But I, the whole game, like it just feels to me like they were like seventy percent done, and hadn't play tested it and tweaked it enough and polished it, and then they were like, "Well, we need to ship it." Yeah, like that's how it, it feels it, to me. Well, again, like, it, it might have been like at the point like we're trying to get this out to to capitalize on the movie, and it just didn't work because right. like and again, and again, like I wish to, like there, there's so many things to this game. I wish we got more of. Like I wish we would have got like Timon and Pumbaa in more of the the level games, not just the bug catching stuff. Yeah, like, I agree. With I don't that. know. It's, it's those things where like, I like, I would have liked to have different characters throughout and things like that, because it's like, yes, it's sip. You're, I understand this move. The movie's all about Simba, but like, can we get one level of Timon and Pumbaa going through an area? Like just, 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 be, yeah. just be like a, a level where you can just run with Pumbaa, just knocking shit over or something. Just, I, I agree with that. But yeah. on that note, on that note, though, I will say, um, well, I don't, I'm in the stampede right now, and this is an example, this is perfect, this is like exhibit A for this. I, I do genuinely really appreciate that they tried to do, like, the levels aren't just the same old, you know, 
oh, fuck, I hate yeah. the stampede level. They're not the same level over and over again. They're like, here's a platforming level. Then there's the monkey puzzle, which, fuck that monkey puzzle. I guarantee you there are a lot of people listening to this that played this as kids, and that was where their game ended, was level it's two, not the even, monkey puzzle. It's not even the monkeys that would mess me up. It was the jumping with the ostrich that always screwed me up. Oh, buddy. Like, yeah, oh. We'll, we'll get, we'll get or, there. Or just I, jumping from giraffe to giraffe. Sometimes you go to jump, but just for some reason, he they won't you wouldn't jump forward and he doesn't like- jump thank you i was saying that on stream i'm like i've i have been playing platformers for 35 years i know how to push the jump button sometimes yeah. he doesn't jump and i don't oh, 100%, know 100 100 oh 100%. i don't know if it's like an animation and he's stuck in that animation so he can't i don't know but there are times where he doesn't jump i will then, i will the, i will swear and- to that and then that goddamn giraffe head would just tilt and you fall into the water because you, you can't jump properly. It's like, God damn it. Yeah. So like, and, and I want to get, and I want to spend some time on level two, but I wanted to just make that point. I do like, I mean, obviously the game actually stays surprisingly loyal to the source material as far as it's a pretty good job of telling the story of the movie. And, uh, and I really do like the, the level variety. Like, you go a platforming level. Then you have that stupid level with the with the monkeys and the hit, which sucks, but it's still variety. Then you do another platforming level. Then you do this stampede where you're running toward the camera with all the, I don't know what they are, elk? I don't know what they are. Uh, I have no idea. Not Whatever. Elk, they're, uh, antelopes. 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 I was going to say the horses with horns, but yeah, antelopes. That's right. <laughs> uh, the horn horses are all running from behind you and you're trying to keep <laughs> Simba alive while you're running through the stampede. Then you have that level where you're sliding down all the waterfalls and then you have to climb back up the waterfall. And that's as far as I've ever gotten in this game. But I, I do like that. At least they didn't just mail it in and, and basically make you play the same level over and over again. Like they, I, I genuinely, I don't think they just mailed it in and half assed this game. I just think that it, I, I feel like they, I always use the stupid analogy of like, it's a pie and they use the, like, you know, we put 50% of the pie into the graphics. I, I really do feel like they put like 80% of this game's pie into the graphics and sound and did a great job with them, but at the expense of some of the gameplay. Yeah. Um, again, and, and like, there's lot, like later levels, like I, and again, I, I, like a lot of the later levels I played because of levels, the level select on the switch version. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I, cause I just couldn't get like, for, I usually can probably get to that waterfall level at best. And then if on some runs and then I just, I'm just done. Cause I just get killed. But like, yeah. Like the, the the lava level, I I I don't remember a lava part of the game, but I, or the movie, but I could be wrong. Yeah, um, I, I I will say I have not seen this movie in probably thirty years, twenty five years. So I I'm not gonna speak to like the exact accuracy because I haven't seen that movie in forever. But by and large, like I'm like I'm like oh yeah, I remember the part where he's in the stampede. I remember, you know what I mean? Like they they're fairly decent, like fairly decent. Remember the part where he fucking had to solve the puzzle of how to swing from monkey to monkey to get across the water i remember that part so uh i I want to address that level select thing too because i had people like tagging me on social media dude play the switch version play the switch version i bought the steam version same exact thing i can skip levels uh i just i i a would rather play it with a genesis controller uh Mm. and b i just i i I don't know why i guess i'm just a, a fucking sadistic fuck with these games but like if i can't beat it fair and square i don't want to beat it and like I know yeah. I could level select just to see the other levels, but I'm like I'm not, and I'm not dunking on you for doing this, but I'm just yeah. like, but I'm like I'm not beating the game. I'm just seeing the levels. That that's and I'm like more or less why I did it. Beat it. So I just wanted to see the levels to kind of remember them, and then I played through the boss level, and I was just like, oh, I hate this so much. I never got to Scar. Like a lot of my like I, I ended up watching a video to uh, to see all this and just me to, too. Just to, see a good playthrough just to see all the levels really and then i played the scar one and the lightning just kept killing me and, I'm, and fire it's just like are you fucking kidding yeah me? i i agreed i i fuck i just died of it fucking i am gonna i have wasted i have probably died 300 times on this stampede the stampede is worse than the monkey oh uh, it's so um, annoying i i watched the playthrough of it on youtube as well and the and the playthrough was like 40 minutes long or something and that right there yeah. and i've said this about other retro games but like that's why your difficulty is so high because if you if you're renting a game and like and I guarantee you this game was doing big money back in the day, mm-hmm. both rental 100%. and sale wise, because Lion King was so big. And if you had rented a game and beat it in the in the hour after you brought it home from the rental store, a you're certainly never renting it again. You're never asking your parents to buy it for you, and you're mm-hmm. probably a little bit like I did that with the Little Mermaid when I was a kid on the NES. I rented it and beat it the day I brought it home, and I was like, well, I'm never I have like I'm never renting this again. You know what I mean? Like so I I get why. It's 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 increasing the length of the game artificially by making it difficult. I just I just think they went a little. 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't know. I don't mind that it's difficult. I mind how it's difficult. Yeah. Again, there's so many weird, annoying things. The hip boxing, all that. There's just so much little weird shit to this. It's a cheap fucking game. It's a uh, cheap yeah, fucking it's game. It's cheap in the way. And then, like, you kind of get hit in the weirdest points. Like, I literally was jumping over Hyena and he jumped up. I was jumping to land on him and he jumped up and hit me. And I'm like, you were literally just started huffing and puffing. How the hell yeah. are you jumping? I'm like, mm. I know it's fucking it's just, uh, anyway. Okay. So let's go. I want to go through some of these levels. Cause like the first level is what it like the first level, everybody beat the first level. Like, I don't even oh, know yeah. if you can die in the first level. You're just climbing trees in the jungle and collecting bugs. It, it's very easy. And then you fight a hyena at the end and it's yeah, very, sorry, easy. it's super simple, but then you get to level two and that's the one where I know I've gotten messages from people being like, I never beat level two. And it's got oh. three different segments to it that are all, frustrating you have to jump from giraffe head to giraffe head while they're standing in deep water but if you stand on their heads for too long they tilt their head back and dump you into the water and like you said and i will i will swear on molly's soul that i'm i'm not making this up sometimes he doesn't jump and you try to yep. jump off these fucking giraffes and he doesn't jump and then you, ah, i just beat the stampede and then you fall into the fucking water and it's so infuriating yeah because you press the jump as you're going forward and then he you just run off the, the giraffe instead of jumping to the next giraffe and you're like what the hell just happened and i did it three times in a row yeah yeah oh yeah dude i've wasted level. so many lives on three it. times fucking... like I, I just remember it happening three times like three exact plays in a row and i'm like what the hell is going on and what's and what's really fucked is that the giraffes are realistically the easiest part of that level they because are. when you're not jumping from the giraffe head to giraffe fuck i hate this fucking simba's exile level where the rocks are falling from the sky i'll get there in a minute so oh, like I hate that. Wh when mm. you're when you're not jumping from giraffe head to giraffe head then you're either having monkeys toss you around, which we'll get to, or you have to do those jumps from the hippo tails. And I, and those hippo tails. So like there's all these big fat hippos standing in the water with their tails, just dangling back and forth. <laughs> and it's, and it's classic platformer where you're just swinging from, from tail to tail and jumping from tail to tail. But like that is, I, that, that segment, and everyone listening to this that has played this game knows exactly what I'm talking about. The, the, and that's where the inconsistency thing comes in because some of them, you just have to hit jump and then you'll grab the next tail. Some of them you need to hold forward and press jump and then you'll grab the tail. And there doesn't seem to be any consistency to when you will and when you won't grab the tails. Yeah, like it's again, just, you fall right through them and it's insta death because you're right over the water. Yeah. And again, it's just so there, those weird annoyances. We'll talk about it in, in the bone year level two of just like trying to grab onto something. And it's just for some, you land on it, but it's not there for some weird yeah. program. Now, I, now I, I will say, like replaying this over and over to get ready for the show, I have mastered those hippo tails. Oh yeah, you, uh, you get after a while, you kind of know where to land with the hippo tails. But then, that like the first set of monkeys is very easy to figure out. It's it's pretty simple. Turn yeah. turn the two pink monkeys, you're good to go to the next uh, uh, ostrich. Or the first ostrich. Oh, yeah, and there's then, four parts. Sorry, because there's the giraffe, the hippo tails, the monkeys, and then we'll get to the ostrich. I forgot. Yeah, there's four parts in this fucking level. Yeah, that Sorry. first monkey, the first monkey puzzle, fairly simple. Just scare the two, just roar at the two monkeys, the, and you go. But it's it's the second set of monkeys that you have to like redo like three goddamn times to get them to throw you in the right direction. Because you get they got to throw you back and then throw you back over. And it's just yeah. like. Uh. If you've never played it, there's these blue and pink monkeys hanging in these trees and. You basically jump on, um, I can't remember if it's a hippo or a, I think it's a hippo. Might've been a rhino. I don't remember, but you jump on, you jump on an it's animal's a, head. The rhino, the rhino launches you. Yeah. So it is a rhino. Okay. So yeah. you jump on the rhino's head and then the rhino launches you up into the air and then the monkeys that are in the air catch you. And then they're basically, you know, treating Simba like a basketball. Like he goes into a little ball and they're throwing them back and forth to each other. And like Andre said, the first, like, and, and there's some monkeys that are, are, uh, stagnant and they don't they don't change they always stay in the same position but then there's other monkeys that you can use simba's little growl that he does and you scare the monkeys and then they switch positions and then when they switch positions uh they do a different they throw you a different direction or whatever and the first one is super easy but then in the, then there's these other two where it, it's there must be like 30 monkeys and i could see a kid never figuring out which monkeys you need to yell at to get them to switch directions to let you through. I could totally see a kid getting stuck there forever. I, I have beaten it numerous times and I still can never remember which monkeys I need to get to fucking turn to throw yeah, me it, through that puzzle. It, 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 it's, a jump. 
It's and Sorry. then the, the ostriches alone too, dude. Oh yeah, and then so then when you solve, and the most uh. frustrating thing about this monkey puzzle is that it you can't die. There's nothing to kill you. No. Uh, there's no timer. There's no anything. It's just every time you think you've got it figured out, you jump on the rhino. He throws you up into the sea of monkeys, and then you wait thirty seconds or so while the monkeys all toss you around and hope that this is the time you got it right that they throw you out of the section. And and then once they throw you out of the section, then you land on the back of an ostrich who's taking off through the Amazon or whatever the fuck. And then you have to, you're riding this ostrich and it's, 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 I mean, for lack of a better comparison, it's a little bit like the Battletoad speed bikes. You have to either duck or jump and, and the ducking. Or is like, there's a double jump also in there too. That's I the problem. Go. The the yeah. single jump over a pig that's standing there, not a big deal. And the single duck under the two nests in the tree, not a big Fine. deal. But then there's a few segments where you have to jump over a pig. Fuck off. Grab the ledge, you stupid cat. Um fuck, I hate this game. I every time I every time I'm not playing it, I'm like, I gotta go back and play this game. And then every time I play this game, I'm like, fuck, I hate this game. Uh <laughs> it's because you haven't beat it and your your brain just burns my ass. This game, yeah. So you you uh you have to jump over the pig and then there's two nests above the pig and what you have to do is jump once and then while the ostrich goes between the first nest and the second nest you have to hit jump at the exact precise moment to launch yourself off the ostrich over the second nest then land on the ostrich on the other side of the nests and and, and much like the a lot of the other jumps in this game the the like once you've got it figured out it's really not too bad but nailing that that timing is like like fucking if you, if you jump too early your ostrich hits the pig uh, or li- will land on the pig and then you just land on the ground and die yeah it, it, but if you jump too late obviously you, you're gonna hit the pig and you're not gonna think or if you you jump the wrong time again they're so so goddamn precise. It, it is like it is like I, I swear to fuck it's got to be like three frames that you have where you can nail that jump to get mm. and once you've got it you have it and it's not too bad but learning it is so fucking frustrating. And it's and it's one hit. It's not like you lose health when you miss that jump. It's like, oh no, you died. Go back to the start. Fucking learn the monkey puzzles again. Do it all again. Like, I mean, there are a few checkpoints in it, but that level, I, I've gotten so many. I guarantee you, a majority of our listeners have died on that level countless times that have played I it. And you know what I'm talking I, about. I died so many times trying to play this level. Just it's fucking ridiculous. And and it, and the, it's it. the god it's the goddamn giraffes and the goddamn ostriches that kill me that's it's not it's not the monkeys the monkeys i'm fine monkeys the monkeys monkeys. can't fucking kill you they're just annoying monkeys are fine the monkeys are fine fuck dude it's it's brutal so then that oh for fucks dude i fuck i'm i'm on i'm on the fucking level where all the rocks or coconuts or whatever falling from the sky and like it's just i I, either they kill me we'll get there we'll get there so then you beat that stupid level if you're able to beat that level then you get to do a little bonus stage with um I can never remember well, is Timon the uh Timon is the meerkat and Pumbaa is the okay. warthog. I so you're Timon meerkat. and you're running around collecting bugs, which are like how you get extra lives and it's cool, mm-hmm. that's fine, whatever. Then you go to the boneyard and that boneyard is another one where it's just a basic platforming level where you're running through skeletons avoiding these fucking crazy hyenas and these stupid buzzards, but it's another one of those ones where it's just I can't figure out where do you want me to jump? What am I grabbing? When like I know you can kill the hyenas after they jump and land and they're huffing and puffing. But like you said, it seems like they huff and puff for different lengths of time. And the number of times I've gone to jump on one while it's huffing and puffing to kill it only for it to then be like, Oh no, I'm not huffing and puffing anymore. Fuck you. And it kills me instead. It's just, I fuck. I hate that fucking level. The only way for me to literally get to that level is just to keep running. Like, Cause I, I, that's the only way I get through that level is I just keep running. I avoid most of the bad guys except yeah. those goddamn turkeys or yeah, those, buzzards, those whatever buzzard things, yeah. the buzzards. Yeah. I say turkeys. I don't know why, uh, but like, oh, Got those it. are annoying. They follow you. Yeah, they do, and they're so hard to jump on because you can't jump on them till they swoop down at you, and they swoop down so fast and so inconsistently that you can't figure. Oh my god, dude! Most of the, I, I again lear- playing that level over and over and over again. I was, I'll admit, I save stated the hell out of this game because because again, I didn't want to be like getting sent back, like get to continue and run out of continues and all that yeah. garbage. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so I, I, I learned eventually when you run up on you leap and try to land. I could, most of the time I could leap and land on them before they took flight. So I could get rid of most of them. And yeah, then they that's, literally, that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. And then they literally just go unplucked and fall to the ground. It, that's actually a pretty funny animation. When you land on them, they, turn, they, they unpluck themselves. It's yeah. It's pretty funny. 
Yeah, that's the key is to kill them before they get off the ground. Like, don't even let them start because once they're flying around, you're fucked. Yeah, um, it's, for me, but for me, that that whole level is just running and just continuously trying to get to the end. There's yeah. the one hyena I think you have to fight when you're up top because of that to, to break the one wall. There's a couple of ports like that where you have to fight a couple to get them to break a wall down to get through. Yeah, yeah, because the wall won't break until you beat that hyena. But unless but like, you're fuck's sakes. yeah, sorry, I'm on the waterfall climbing part, and it's just like fucking fucking game. I. I can't decide. I think this game does suck, but I can't stop playing it. I don't know why. Um, it, it, it sucks, but it's also like addictively fun in the same weird way because it's ch- so challenging. You're like, I need to beat this. I, need I feel. To beat this. I feel like it's I like a fucking. It's like a goddamn canker sore on my tongue that I keep pressing against my teeth, mm. and I know it hurts, and I'm not getting anything out of it, but I keep fucking doing it anyways, and I don't know why. So yeah. So you beat much. the boneyard, which I, I will say, like the boneyard looks cool. And I love oh. that when you get to the end of the boneyard, Scar is just standing there and like the silhouette of him in the background. Like that's, and we'll get to the, I promise like we're going to break for a sponsor in a minute. And then when we get back, I want to praise some stuff. It's not all bad. Um, no. But, but once you beat that fucking boneyard, then you get into that stampede level where you're running toward the camera with all the, the elk with, or the horses with horns. Yeah. And uh, that, that level, that level has killed me more than any level in this game so far. Yeah. That, Cause again, it's, it's, there, I, I don't even think there's a pattern. It seems almost random every time. I, 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 I think there's somewhat of one, but like I can't tell when I can hug the side of the screen and when I can't. And these stupid rocks keep appearing. And oh, there's really no... I've never been able to get a semblance for when I'm jumping over them. I get that they go faster as you go, but I don't. I can't get a feel for when I'm jumping over them. And I just... I have died on that level so many times. And there's no checkpoint in it. You've got to do it in one shot. And it. I yeah. hate that. I fuck... I, I, when I, I love jumping. I, I, I find that I just continuously jump. I'm usually pretty safe as when in that one in the stampede. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's how I beat it as well. Most of the time is I just end up jumping like crazy and hoping I get through. Mm-hmm. Um, so then when you get through there, then you get to Simba's exile, which is another jungle level. And these fucking, I don't know if they're rocks or coconuts, but they're oh. falling. They fall at random from the sky. And the problem is while they're falling and hitting you and doing damage, there are a ton of, of the ledges you need to jump up and grab. And like you said, when you grab a ledge in this game, you can't just climb up on it. You can't just, I'm dying on this waterfall. You can't just climb up on it. You have to dangle on it for a second before he jumps up. And while you're mm-hmm. dangling, the rocks fall and hit you and there's nowhere for you to go. Yeah. There's nowhere just, to go. Oh, it's so frustrating. Cause you're just, you're just, and, and then there's a part where you got to go down in the tunnel, but then you have to make yourself roll to take out the porcupines and you get past him. But then that boulder's chasing you and it's a couple yes. times you have that. And it's just like, if you don't roll at the exact right point, you hit the porcupine, which only takes damage, but then the boulder runs over you and kills you. And it's just like, and while you're rolling uh, through these caverns, those stupid rocks are still falling from the sky yes, and they're and hitting that, you. And once you start rolling, you can't even stop. You just have to get hit by them. Yeah, and, it, and that, and then it, because it, when they hit you, it takes away your health, and then you, you stop, and then it stops you for a second, and then you have to keep going, and then that boulder hits you, and you're like, ah, ah, and that, those, those rocks killed me more than anything. Yeah. Those falling me rocks, too. because again, they took away, some, or they were the reason for my death, because it would take away so much health, and then I jump to a spot, and then I get hit by the suit, like just by something dumb. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh. No, that, that level, that level is like, is, is like capital fucking C cheap. It's it's yeah. fucking ridiculous. I hate that level. And then once you beat that level, then you're in the level that I cannot get past, Takuna Matata, which I love the music for, and it's bright and colorful and it looks nice, but I cannot for the life of me climb this. You have to climb this waterfall where all these logs are falling down in completely random patterns, and your jump to land from one log to the next has to be so... You can't even grab them and pull yourself up. You just have to stick the landing right on top perfectly, and if you miss one, you're probably dead, and then you have to go back up and try again, and I... I yeah, have never I beaten this. I, I'm I'm here right now. I've never beaten this waterfall. This is as far yeah, as I've gotten. Again, and the only reason I know like the boss, I've seen the boss, and this is from watching a playthrough. Uh, yeah, at yeah. least I remember him watching him. I'm like, oh, I probably got through that one as a kid because I remember that. I remember it's like an ape throwing coconuts at you. Oh, the boss to the, 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 the Sakuna Matata level. Yeah, it's like an eight oh, throwing coconuts, and then you got to hit him, and then he goes up to another Wait. second. And you follow him, and then you follow him up, and you have, to, you have to fight him like four or five times, I think. I can't this beat one. this. I can't do this because the fucking logs, there's no consistency. They just keep falling. So I'm jumping from one to another and it's not giving me a log that I can jump on to keep climbing up. So I'm slowly just sliding down this waterfall until eventually I die. This is such 
God, I fucking liked this game 31 minutes ago when we started talking. And now I'm just mad again. This is such horseshit. Fuck this game. Fuck me. Oh, fucking it, Cat uh, deserves to die. I don't fucking there, care. There, I'm glad his no dad died, and I wish he had died too. Yeah, Fuck. it's so it's so it's so inconsistent trying to jump onto so many things in this game, and then just the way like even if you succeed, it, it somehow screws you in another point. It's so stupid. Ah, oh, fuck. Here, okay, we got uh, uh, Molly just ran out of the room. I need to calm down. Let's take a break. When we come back, there are some positives about this game that I want to get into. We've been shitting on it for half an hour. So let's take yeah. a break. Let a sponsor in, and then we'll say something nice. Fucking waterfall, suck my dick. We'll be right back. Okay, fuck, fuck me, fuck. I'm still trying to climb the waterfall while we play, but I don't want to get mad anymore. Let's, uh, so like, there are four more levels after that. I think this is the last one, and then you become adult Simba, I think. Um, yeah. Um, I have never played them. Do you have anything to say about the adult Simba? I've never played them. I don't know. Yeah, so I, I again, I played them on levels. So like, the level level, I'm like, it just doesn't make sense. And in the end, you, to finish the level, you're gonna, you gotta like wait out these four things to close and the pieces to fall down. And it's just so dumb. It's just a dumb level. Um, there's this. It's the second last level. Where Simba's going through the caves, but like it's a it's a cave maze where you gotta you gotta pick. There's so many different caves you can go through, and it's a it's a giant maze to get to the end. And there's so many goddamn hyenas in there. I've never beaten that one, and I never. I at least I for, I don't remember from a, a kid who ever fought Scar. But at the Scar level, you're going from platform to platform as lightning striking platforms, and you jump onto one, it can strike the platform you land on. And it's just like geez. that's ridiculous. I've, watch- I've heard, I've read that the scar fight itself, like you have to do some weird move where you mash two buttons and then you can throw them over your head and you need to throw them off a cliff, which is a cool. I saw a guy do it on the playthrough I watched, and it looked yeah. cool, but it also looks like I would break my fucking controller trying to do it. Oh, again, it did not look easy because again, this guy was the one I played through. I watched took him a while to get it to finally get Scar in position to do it and then throw him off because you got to put yourself at the edge of it. Yeah, yeah. So you catch him, so you, you throw him over your head and he goes off the edge of the cliff. But like he'll jump back to the middle so many times. I love that the designers were like, "Okay, we can't make it too easy. Your kids will beat it in a weekend." Well, the alternative is we make sure that no kid ever fucking beats it. And they're like, yeah, let's fuck this fucking waterfall. They're like, yeah, let's do that instead. I like, cause I never would have beaten that fight as a kid and got to keep in mind for our younger listeners. Like there was no internet when this game came out, you weren't Googling how to beat it. Like you were, you were just dying over and over while you figured it out. Yeah. Looking Again, it, it was just play and play. Like if you were lucky, your parents bought you a guide, but yeah. I mean, that said, I will that? say, I will say, if I had I owned this game as a kid, I even though I couldn't have beaten it, I would have kept playing it. Like oh, I, yeah. I know I would have. I had Dennis the Menace for my Super Nintendo when I was a kid, and it was a shit game that I couldn't beat either. <laughs> but I played it like crazy just because I was like, well, I like I like the movie and I have this game, so like I would have played this. Like this would have. So I guess in that sense, like it's really no different than most NES games that I played growing up that were just hard for the sake of being hard. It's just. It's the Lion King. And like, I want to get into the positives. Like I'm playing it right now and I'm like, dude, this is simply put, this is one of the best looking games from this generation. Oh, the the, like, the art to this, to this game is, it, it looks gorgeous. It yeah. looks like you're playing a cartoon as yeah, you're and, playing yeah. the game. Everything looks so like, it, like, and the levels are pretty solid the way they are, but like how Simba looks, how the hyenas look, how the, 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 I keep wanting to say turkey birds, but the the vultures the horses look, with horns. Yeah, the, the vultures, horses with yeah. horns. How the horses with horns look. Like again, they all look cool though. Again, how they animated the the second level with the monkeys in different colors, and then the yeah, rhinos yeah. are looking all green. And it's again, so I, bright and colorful. Yeah, it oh, really, it, it's it, a treat to look at. And, and then it, you go to you go to the boneyard, right. and everything's so dark and gloomy. But then, but like Simba pops, the hyenas pop out. Like they all again, it it, it works so well. Yeah, and the boneyard fits. Like it's dark, but it's not like ugly to look at dark. It like it fits the it fits that level. Like yeah. from the from the movie, like it fits that portion of the movie, that scene, that's the word I'm looking for. It's the good oh, kind what of the dark. Fuck? How much how much higher is this fucking waterfall? There's oh, like a, there's gigantic. like there's like a platform going across the middle and I'm trying to land on it and I'm like, "Oh no, maybe I can't land." I did it. Okay. All right, let's fucking Oh, this game's good again. I beat the waterfall. Oh my god. Okay. No! And you can fall? What the shit? Did I step? I think I stepped on a log and then it carried me past the top platform and I'm now I'm climbing the fucking waterfall again. Fuck me. Anyway, uh, so yeah, dope. it looks nice. And the and and in addition uh, to the gorgeous graphics, 
Um, I love the music. Like I, I will say the only problem oh. I have with the music is it does when you're dying over and over and over again, I just can't wait to be king starts to really grind your gears. But the again, first the first yeah. 20 minutes, it's really nice. Oh, it, it, it's 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 a beautiful soundtrack. Look at it. It's 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 the Lion King music done in like sixteen bit or thirty whatever bit. Yeah, like is. chip tunes or whatever the fuck. Chip yeah. tune. It's so good. Yeah, and the music just, really listen. does. It really does sound great. Yeah. yeah again and again, it, it's the sa- the sounds to the game. It all sounds. Everything sounds nice. It, it's just it's, it's, the, it's the game itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like. I was genuinely, and it's not just the music. Like the music's great. The 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 bright, colorful graphics. Uh, I even like the like. Not that there's a lot of it, but for a Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis era game, uh, oh, checkpoint! Oh my god, uh, I like that. Um, there's actual like tiny little voiceovers, like yeah. you hear. Uh, which one is it, Pumbaa? Which one's Timon? Uh, Pumbaa's the warthog. You hear Timon talk, yeah. talk to you at points, and then you hear uh, James Earl Jones as Mufasa talking at points. You hear Scar, uh, who I can't remember the yeah. guy plays Scar, but you hear Scar at points, and it's just ah. Uh, you yeah, just, I like yeah. that. I like that the game starts with Timon being like, "It starts," and I'm like, "It's like his like foreshadowing of like, sorry, kid, your weekend is <laughs> like that's what it feels like he's doing." But I love that you get to hear him say that, and yeah, you hear Scar be like, "Kill him," like in a couple yeah. of times, like, and that's fucking awesome. Like that is so, like that's that's cutting edge shit for back then. And I and I've been looking at the Super Nintendo. Like I've only played it on the Genesis. I was looking at the Super Nintendo one, and I've said this countless times, and I will continue to do so. Uh, dude, this once you beat the waterfall, you have to climb down platforms to get to the bottom again. But you can't see where a platform is below you, so you're yeah, just so kind of taking a leap of faith. This is fucking ridiculous. What a dumb <laughs> it's game! So it's so stupid. What a fucking <laughs> stupid game. Anyway, it, it's one of those ones where you like you you die and you're like, I have to beat you. I have to beat you. And I think that's but, how but you of... can't because I can't yeah. see where the platform I'm jumping down to is. You're literally jumping blind and just hoping you land on something. Mm-hmm. fuck you anyway uh i i like that yeah you have the voiceovers and stuff like that i like i think scar i had to look up during the intro dude fuck this monkey boss too uh scar oh, is awesome is like, dumb i can't i just he just like bitch slapped me and now oh, fuck you and now i'm back to the very beginning and that because i just game over it and now i have to climb that fucking waterfall again oh fuck this game anyway I've, I, i'm fucking i shouldn't be playing while i'm recording i think these make for terrible episodes. <laughs> I, uh, love it. Scar, I as a, a guest i love it <laughs> scar, scar is like is such a great villain and i love seeing him actually like pop up and be like kill him and and that kind of stuff and like and those hyenas dude like because i think simba looks great like the, even like i'm looking at him right now just standing here and then like the way his tail is wagging and stuff like it's so realistic looking uh those hyenas those fucking creep those hyenas creep me the fuck out as a kid mm-hmm. and looking at them in this game i'm like they captured that like to the to the pixel like they look exactly like they do in the fucking in the movie Again, they I, look great. I, I think they like all the character builds all the, the sprites to even the bad guys that annoy you they all look so clean yeah they do and for yeah. a 16-bit game or whatever bit the Genesis was. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it yeah. everything looks so clean and you know, all that blast processing, you know, the blast. Uh, processing. <laughs> but again, it, off. sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I shouldn't it, be playing it, while I'm recording. It's just, they all look so clean and, and smooth, but they just annoy you. Cause it's just like, where do I hit you? <laughs> That's it. It's like, I don't know where you want me to go. Like, it's so nice to like people on my stream were talking about how much fun they were having watching it. And I, I don't know how much of that was like, they like watching me, have a fucking aneurysm on stream. But I also think part of it is like it, like I watched that let's play and I was like, I'm actually genuinely enjoying just watching this let's play because this is, this is gorgeous. And that's the point I was going to make is the super Nintendo version looks good as well, but I have said it as a super Nintendo kid born and raised. I have said it countless times. Sega games look better than super Nintendo games by and large. And this is no different. Like the super Nintendo one looks good, but look at them side by side. This, the, the Sega Genesis one does look better. Sega Genesis games are fucking just works of art from a graphic standpoint. Some of them suck mm-hmm. to play, but from a graphic standpoint, they are just stunning. And this is, this might be like, I don't know if I want to sit here and definitively say it's the best looking 16 bit game I've ever played. That might be a little bit uh, extreme, mm-hmm. but like it's, it's, it's up there. It is just even like I'm watching him run right now, Simba uh, and his running motion is so fluid. Like it doesn't look choppy. 
Like it, yeah. I, they put, it mo- they put so- money into the game for the animation style and the character builds and things in the level design and look, they put a lot of money into that. I, oh, yeah, I feel yeah. like they did. It's just, they said, ah, we're not, we, oh, we made a short game. Okay. We got to make it super hard. Yeah. I like, yeah. I feel like it's, I, I feel like it's running at 60 frames per second. I have no idea if it is. I know, but that's what it feels like. I'm like, this is so smooth. I just can't get this fucking cat to do what I want him to fucking do. That's all. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And then like the other thing about it is I do like that. It comes with difficulty settings. Cause I've played it on easy and normal. I, I I have no interest in trying this game on hard. It might no. that might be the end of me, and I will die playing video games eventually. But it's not going to be the fucking Lion King. I can promise you that much. Um, I can't imagine it on hard, but on no, on easy, which is what I've been playing it on, you get eight lives, and I think you only have to jump on those hyenas once. I don't know what any of the other differences are, but then you get continues. I will say, and I think like I even if we want to look past the difficulty because you know they we know why they made it so hard. Uh, I do think a password system would have been a. Uh, oh, by far. Like, Again, you, like you, like like you were saying for Star Wars, like we need passwords. Passwords. Yeah. I can live without save files. I can live with your game being hard to make it longer. I can live with those things, but like uh, a password system, because like I, dude, I have like five, and there's extra continues laying around all over the place, and oh, it's giving you extra yeah. lives all over the place in the bug levels and stuff. But like, mm. uh, passwords would have been nice. Like, it would have been nice to be able to, like, game over and then be like, well, I know how to beat... Because once you know the monkey puzzle and you know the timing of the ostriches, level two really isn't that bad. I'm like, I would really... Like, now when I sit down to play this, I would love to be able to just hop right to the the um, the um stampede level. Because I know I can beat the first three without too much difficulty. So yeah. I'd love to be able to just go right to the... And, like, and that's where... I do think that's a miss. Like, I'm going to dock it a point for that. I it should have It should have a password system. But yeah. other Again, than the that, pa- the, yeah, the passwords would have made this a little more palatable for to return to say it like again, like I understand like, as a kid. Yes, you had all the time. If you weren't at school, you could and you weren't doing your homework. You could just play. You could play these games. But as an adult, man, the password would be great. So I could just jump to a later level. You, it'd be yeah. great for you to have passwords. So you could jump past the goddamn waterfall. Yeah. <laughs> and I know, again, I, I'm, I'm fully aware. It's not because like I have people tell me to play the Switch version. It's not just the Switch version. All the modern Disney classic versions of this. You can skip levels. I I can do it on my Steam right now. It's just I want to play it on my Genesis. Like I want to play. I like playing these games it's, in it's their original intro, form. It's a Genesis. I just don't. I don't have a Sega Classic. That's why I'm playing it on Switch. If I had a right. Sega Classic, that's where I'd play because that that nice curved oh, controller. Ah, oh, that's oh, yeah. It's it's it's, it's, it's just my that, favorite controller like, of all time. <laughs> like I I swear to God, like I've had people like messaging me being like, dude, it'll fix the game for you if you play the modern version because you can skip levels. And I'm like, that's not. I don't want to do that. Like, sure, it'd be nice if I could skip them for the sake of the review, but I, I have no interest in playing it that way. I just want to, I just, I just want to be able to beat this fucking game fair and square. Yep. And I just, every time I fucking try some cheap fucking, what the fuck? I just died from the ground slamming. I guess the monkey killed me again. I don't fucking know. Anyway, I don't know what else to say, guys. I, I like, I, I literally have covered every level that I've played of this game ad nauseum. I, 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 the only reason I'm playing this one, well, we, this fucking stupid ape boss like you get near him and he just turns around and bitch slaps you and and kills you in two hits uh yeah, you gotta wait for, i think you gotta wait for him to throw the coconuts a couple times and then he lands on the ground and then you gotta jump on him and then he climbs up to another level then you follow him up and you gotta do it like I four can't. or five times i can't so i can't so get dumb. close enough to dodge the coconuts yeah sorry the point yeah. is oh it's stupid it's a stupid point boss is, the point is, I didn't. I wasn't gonna play this one while I recorded. People seem to enjoy me doing that with the Super Star Wars episode, so I thought it'd be good for a laugh to do it one more time. Dude, this is uh, this oh. is obnoxious. I have gone from I hated this game yesterday. I liked this game when I did the intro. I liked this game when you and I started recording. I hated it five minutes ago. I liked it when I beat the waterfall, and now I hate it again because this yeah. stupid monkey with its stupid coconuts. You can't. I can't kill it. I don't get yeah. it. Oh, it, 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 I don't want, it's I don't a even want dumb, to, annoying boss. It's what I don't it want to talk about sure. it anymore. I'm just going to get mad. I'm done. I, I'm sorry. People that grew up with this game, this, this, I'm telling you right now, and if you want to send me hate mail, I fucking send it. I don't give a shit. This is Bart versus the Space Mutants. Okay? I know people these days, if you were in Tribe Bart versus the Space Mutants now, you'd be like, this game sucks. The jumping isn't consistent. I can't tell where I'm supposed to land. It's too hard. That's this. Okay? I defend Bart versus the Space Mutants to the death. Because I grew up with it. I played it like crazy. I could beat it as a kid. So when people say it's too hard, I'm like, I disagree. It's beatable because I've can. i I've done it. That's what I've been getting from people that grew up with The Lion King. I have no problem with that. 
defend your game. I understand if you grew up playing it, it's fine, but I'm playing it now. And I'm like, I, this, this is not an objectively good video game. In my opinion, it's not, it's, 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 it's just, it's too, there's too much, there's too much guesswork. There's too much not being able to tell what to hit. There's too much not being able to tell what I can grab, how I can grab it, where I can grab it. Uh, it's, is it fun? Sure. Yeah. But I, I just think, I think they really, I think they missed the, I think this could be like an all time great game. And I think they missed the mark with the, with the, n- not just the, 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 like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like not e- just like e- the, no, no, just, it's, it's, like, like, let me lose my, wait, 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 just, I, I, if I lose my train of thought right now, I'm going to be fucked. And I know what I want to say. It's not just the intentional difficulty that's what i'm trying to say but it's the unintentional it's the it's the you weren't the game wasn't polished enough fucking lock down your hitboxes lock down the ledges people need to grab if you want to put in stuff like climbing the waterfall i can live with that difficulty even though i think it's bullshit because it's not broken it's just very hard i can live with that but when i'm constantly dying because i can't grab a ledge or i'm constantly dying because i can't get simba to do what i want him to do that to me, that's not that. And Bard versus the Space Mutants does that. That's bad game, and that's what makes this not a great game, in my opinion. It's not that there's hard portions; it's that your controls are arguably your biggest enemy. Yeah, there. Again, Thank it, you. It, I'm it, sorry. I just didn't want to lose my train of thought. No, there. no, I'm all sorry. good. Go I, I shouldn't interrupt it, but easy should not be this this annoying. The waterfall should not be this hard in easy mode. The 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 hyenas and the bad guys should not be this hard to take. Like they they can like it's just there's so much stupid shit when I it's on fuck. easy mode and it's still like so frustrating. It's just a frustrating game. I every time I I'm always I'm excited to play it and then I sit down and play it and by the time I'm done, I I I'm like I'm not I don't even know if I had fun. Like I'm just mad. And 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 again, it's not because it's hard, dude. I've I've beaten Ninja Turtles on the NES. I can beat Mega Man's fucking standing on my head. I like I don't mind hard games. I my problem is like I just frankly the controls make this game not very fun, in my yeah. opinion. So, I'm done. Do you have anything else to add before we score this thing? I gotta mm-hmm. fucking go have a drink. It's like one o'clock. No, I no I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Uh, what this game? When did the Lion King come out? Nineteen ninety four, I think. Yeah. Like not. I know the game did, but I'm pretty sure the movie did as well. Something around that. the movie came uh, in ninety four. I know that. Yeah, ni- June fifteenth, nineteen ninety four. So let's let's score it out of nineteen ninety four. Go ahead. What are you going to give the Lion King out of nineteen ninety four? Out of nineteen ninety four. Oh, I had a, I had a number for ten, but not. Uh. uh let's go. 1400 oh still a decent score yeah it's a, i think that's probably around a seven i'm gonna guess yeah it's probably about I, I guess, that, yeah i figure that's probably close to a seven yeah 1400 yeah. makes sense all right yeah. um i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it 1100 i'd give it like a six out of ten i looks gorgeous probably sold a lot as a kid i probably would have played the shit out of it not realizing how cheap it is because it was the only game i had but dude i have played a lot of video games and i just I think it's I think this is this is fine-tuned controls and hitboxes away from being like maybe a top 10 game from this era. Yeah. But th- I just find the controls too too frustrating. I just Well, the fact that he doesn't jump every time. He doesn't. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. He doesn't. And like and just trying to like the amount of time I've I've wasted just trying to figure out what can I grab? How do I grab it? Where do I have to land? And I just, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm playing it right now and I'm just, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm questioning whether or not I'm having fun. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it, it, yeah, I'm giving it a, a, what I say? 1100, 1100, 1100. like a six. It's, it's, it is what it is. At least it's pretty. So, uh, but I'll play Aladdin before this any day. So, yeah. Uh, Aladdin, I feel like the last time I played Aladdin, I'm like, I, I could get through it. It's been well, a lot of years, but I can get I, through it. People keep telling me the Genesis version is better. I've the Super Nintendo one is easy, but it's fun. And you want to know the truth, dude? Like I've played the Little Mermaid. I was just telling that story about how I rented it and beat it the day I brought it home. Uh, when I'm playing a Disney game, I don't have a problem with that. I'm like, it's Disney. It's it fucking like they're easy watches. Make it an easy like give me like give it an actual easy mode, not like a what's the easy mode? Oh, the easy mode in this game is you'll die eight times before you quit instead of five. 
Like, give me an actual fucking easy mode. And then if I want to play it hard, then I'll play it hard. So, Andre, I know you uh, you stay busy outside of this stupid game. What uh, what are you doing? And if people want to find it, where can they find it? Oh, I'm doing lots. Uh, you can find me um, on... If you want to contact me, it's uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Twitter's at that Canada guy. Instagram's at that Canada dude. Uh, I cover a lot of Japanese and local Edmonton professional wrestling on my uh, YouTube page. Andre and Melball Wrestling Talk, where me and my uh, co-host Melball, we break down all the Jap- uh, New Japan and Stardom shows we watch. Uh, we also uh, break down all the uh, local events that we go to. And then... Uh, now, if you want to hear us in audio form, go to you can go over to SundayNightsMainEvent.com. Uh, we partnered up with them uh, a few months ago, and they're putting out all of our Japanese shows in uh, audio form. So I'm happy to be working with them. And then we do a live stream every Friday on our local establishment just talking about the week that was in Japanese professional wrestling called the Japanese Wrestling Update over on our local establishment. I like it. Uh, you guys can find links to whatever Andre sends me a link for in the description of this podcast. Cause I don't know what he's going to send me, but whatever he sends me will be in there. I just want to say, I have been trying to climb this waterfall, that entire plug on one life. And I still haven't, I'm still stuck at the halfway mark. Jesus. God, I hate this game. Uh, well, there you go. For people that were honest to cover the lion King, there's your fucking lion King episode. Uh, I don't know what next week's going to be. I don't know if there's going to be one. I'll talk about that more in the outro. Uh, I do want feedback. If you guys want more episodes where I'm playing the game while we're recording, please let me know. And if you're like, dude, please don't play any more games while you're recording. Please let me know. I'm honestly, I just something I tried. I won't do it every week, but I'm just curious to know what people think. So let me know in the, I don't know, however you want to let me know. Andre, um, thanks for, I don't know what your fucking sick, weird ass fetish for stupid Genesis games is, but uh, thanks for doing this again. (laughs) I appreciate it. Uh, Happy to, sir. Sorry, I can't hit end until I die or get to the, buddy, this fucking waterfall. You get so close and then you, I just missed one jump and it's all the way back to the beginning. God, this game fucking I'm done with this game. I don't even want... That is going to do it for this week's episode. Andre, thank you so much for giving me a call and talking to freaking Lion King and to every single one of your nerds listening to this. Whether this was your first Remember the Game or maybe your 291st Remember the Game, thank you so much for the support. I know there's a ton of retro gaming shows out there and that you picked ours. Well, that just warms my heart as much as Scar's heart was warmed when he killed Simba's dad, whose name I can't remember what it was, but he had it coming anyways a uh, couple things i honestly i'm recording this intro before we actually record the lion king discussion if andre plugged something you can find links to it in the description of this podcast and of course do not forget to check out our friends at ourcade uh you can find links to their site in, in the description of this as well it's ourcade.io and uh, don't forget to enter this week's cheat code which is about a certain little short cheater from goldeneye who's a bit of an odd job to get some free credits. And if you enter all the all the cheat codes we've given you this month, the last four episodes of Remember the Game, you will get 10 credits per day until their alpha phase is done. So it's probably worth going back and making sure you have all four of those codes and entering them at arcade.io. Uh, I will be back tomorrow for all of our Patreons with the Patre- or with expansion pass number 205, where I'll be looking back at Nintendo Power's top 100 games of all times list from 1997. That should be a rage-filled experience. Uh, get Friday. It'll be Game Patch, where I'll talk about all the biggest news in video games. And next week, we'll be back with a whole nother slab of podcasts. Uh, I actually, truth be told, I don't know if there's going to be Remember the Game next week. There might be, or it might be an expansion pass episode because I need a week to catch up, but we'll see. That's for seven days from now. This is now. That's the and you understand. Uh, appreciate the listening, everybody. I'm going to thank some patrons to get out of here. Come check me out on Twitch if you want. Twitch.tv slash member the game. And I'll holler at y'all the next time I feel like recording one of these. Cheers. So long. Goodbye. Remember the game is brought to you by our Patreons. I could not puke up all the content I turn out every week without all of your support. The following people are at the senior executive vice president level or higher at patreon.com slash remember the game. And as such, I am contractually obligated to thank them as quickly as possible. So a huge... Thank you, too. 
Remember the game Hall of Famer Slick Motherfucking Rick. Makeshift Mellow Magic Money, Joe Buck, Sharonic, Andre, J Nasty 15, The Keegs, James Clark, Dave McGee, da Dan of Dissect That Film, Doug Doran, Chris Fleury, Andrew Wright, Jordan, Confused But Still Here, Lil Bai Fufu 89, Angry Ticks, Dave Thompson, No One Cares, Scott Brooks, Aaron Lawson, Nathan Tremblay, A Town, Morgan, Zane Donovan, Ryan Kinchin, Mike Maloney, G9 PSX, Mercury 869, Wolfgang, Darren, Andy Hudson, Doogie, Wolf Magic 21, Johnny from Virginia, Squints, Titan 420, Zonko 504, Jeff. Jeff Bergeron, Daniel, Tunable Power, John Woodruff, Randy Barrett, Just a Fish, Adam Blank still hasn't reviewed, Chonky, I always forget what this one says, and the thing cuts it off until I extend. I'm not saying that. I'm not dropping that last word. Adam Blank still hasn't reviewed Chonky Dong 2 Titties. I'm not saying it. Holmes, Zach Shepard, Frosty Feet 492, Triple Chugger 22, Elijah Burns, Madam Nutsich, DBXJ, Jamil Williams, Steve Dalk, Standard Ass Brian, Nizuru, Juris Dr. Mario, Tyler, Phil Lencher, Joe the Sandman, Eric James, Jake Carter, Thomas Childs, Biddy Laces Out Dan, Beaver Boy, Thomas Smith, Leroy Westrich, Rush's Dog Walker, Stud Still Smash, Matt Babinu, Gabe, Dan Fuselman, Fuzzy99, Decoy Man, a dude named Adam, Wyatt the Surgeon, who's not a surgeon, Row, Blaine the Hoagie Man, Scary Terry, Storm Beagle, Archangel Otaku, Earl, Hega Waffle, High Play Drifter, Kayach, Jimothy, Oroku Saki's Gardener, Cody Richardson, General Fury, the Boys on the Roof. I cancel my Netflix to afford this shout out. Max Lagroom, James Juan Francesco, John of the Adult Children Podcast, Franklin Badge, Drugs Ben, MK, okay. Sam Carpenter, Donnie the Dude, Walter, Nerdy Hybrid, The Fletchman, Colin Bollinger, Sleeper Hit, Squeak Nuts, Isaias, Timmy the Exuberant Turtle, Wimp 15, Christian Gabriel, Maverick Marty, Radioactive Man, Musty Beetle, Graham Kennedy, John M. Watkins, Timothy Sabrinsky, My Left Nut, Beef Dingleberry, Tilfredo Bandito, Hitchy Poo, Chevy. Boy 9211, Burt Macklin, Quiet Place Queen, Cam Nelly 23, Christopher Britt, Zamatos, Big the Cat, Tadpole, Maverick, Bobby Litton, Brandon DeZeba, Kia Pup, Monstrous D Boner, AB Killen, Works for Me, Alexander Camps, Neil Cooper, Tom Houlihan, Ted Explosion, Ryan Perry, Alex R, Lucas Valadez, Itchy Nuts Room, Mr. Papa Giorgio, Just Car Prank, Solomon Soto, Rated X, uh, it. Dar Skywalter, Postman, Tazelhoff, West Gen, Nick Creature, Youngster TK, Adam Martinet, A Magician Named Gob, is that like the band? I love the band, Gob. Kevin Monroe, Can't Destroy Her, This MF, El Alpha Kenny One, Beers of War, Because 19, Marcus Mendoza, Lord Longron Von Hugendom II, Roger Staubox, Pool Cleaner, Lucas Shaman, Frosty Bear, Max Sandin, Sour Goatface, Alex Ramos, Faded Sufferance, Benjamin Atkins, Carbon Fiber Zombie, Chris Hill, Question Mark Profits, Mellow Yellow 8787, B Money, Tyler Bauer, Fallen Snow Kiku, The Supreme Chose Ariza, Would You Kindly, E Man Trucker, Mark Sneed, Atrio Wormwood, Shoeboxers, Pat Phoenix, Jay Callahan, Robbie Air, Guy Who Does Things, Sabin, Brian Richmond, Blobby Rogers, Glue Scoppin, Bula, Matt Zeus, Buy Me Bone Storm, Plow King, Cesar, Fill Up My Mouth With Farts, Liquor Like Luigi, Cody Thompson, Put It In Age, Chaz Hammond, Elephant, Cavs, Scissor Fist, Ace McGuy, Big Daddy Randall, Ryan Whitcomb, Flinny123, Lord Stay Puffed, AJ McCurgy, Lotus, Fill Up Ramsey, Nothing Could Possibly Go Wrong, Toby OP, Alex McIntyre, S, Bearded Bastard, Eric Hopewell, Darbles, Donkey Kong Country turns 30 this year, David Schroeder, Theodore, Chicken Gizzards, Diablo Spartan, Justin Blair, Wilco, VOS Rangers, Super Jess, Captain Steve and the Card and wearing wrestler Adam's former assistant Shake the Rat Face Bazzard Devin Collins in Human Sumo and Crystal Lake Management that was pretty fucking good that's me patting myself on the back hell yeah take it easy everybody thank you for the support talk to you next week